Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Note Closure Show. As always, I'm your host, Scott Carson. Excited to be here this, uh, I guess it's Fat Tuesday, now that I think about it. Uh, uh, Rock and roll along this Tuesday here in Austin, Texas. Bit of a a rainy, dreary day, but we are excited. We're rock and rolling along. I'm so honored to have our guest on this episode. He is a man that really needs no introduction if you're in the note industry. This man is well-known a huge advocate for the paper and note investing. He goes back. uh, We won't go back as far as says he does because this guy has been around and helped thousands and thousands of note investors, new and seasoned along in their business. So we are so honored to have uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Bill Mancaro. Good morning this morning. It's, it's a simple little noise box, but it works great. Uh, don't, 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 don't uh, destroy my dreams there. <laughs> uh, well, g- good morning, Bill. Uh, you have uh, done a lot of amazing things uh, in the note industry and, and been a really big advocate. And you, you date back a little bit. Would you mind sharing with everybody here who's either watching us live on the Facebook Live or listening to us on iTunes, Stitcher, and all the online podcast platforms, kind of how you got your start as a note investor and, and really – kind of your, your before that, because you've got really a, a really cool backstory b- b- to, before you became a note investor. Okay, well, uh, uh, very briefly, um, as far as getting started, uh, I worked on uh, Capitol Hill in Washington uh, for the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives as a, as a staffer, um, both for several members and uh, a couple of members and uh, a committee. And, you know, I got a little money together and was able to uh, put a down payment on a, on a house uh, to buy for, in other words, just getting married. And then uh, talked to some people who were buying rental houses and renting them out. So I started getting into that. And I can, I can say that I can credit my tenants for getting me into notes. Because <laughs> uh, uh, as, as you know, and a lot of people watching, I'm sure know that uh, notes, uh, you know, when the, when a uh, tenant uh, has a, you know, toilet backs up or something breaks, he does not call the banker. He calls the owner of the house, the landlord. So I like to be the banker rather than the owner of the house, although I'm both. I do, I do the rental houses as well still. But um, that's kind of how I, I got into it. Uh, I first heard about notes by going to a, a Jimmy Napier seminar uh, in uh, Ch- uh, near Chipley, Florida, uh, mm-hmm. which is uh, uh, known as uh, it's the Florida Panhandle. The locals call it L.A., which is Lower Alabama. <laughs> uh, it's uh, the Redneck Riviera, but it's a cool place. I love it. Uh, and uh, started talking to some people there, and they said, "Well, what about you know? You invest in notes?" And I didn't know what they're you know talking about musical notes. I didn't know what they're talking about. So uh, you know, everybody everybody starts knowing nothing. As I, I always reassure people, nobody is born you know knowing the difference between a mortgage and a trustee. Uh, these are things you got. You just learn along the way. And uh, ask questions. Never be afraid to ask questions. So that's uh, in a in a thumbnail. Uh, that's how I got started in both. I shouldn't say I. Allison and I, my wife, who is my business partner, and uh, you know I'm uh, uh, most people. I think most people know her more probably better than me because she's uh, the face of our uh, meetings. And uh, uh, the first contact you have with a paper source is usually Allison, and uh, so she's been my partner uh, ever since. And uh, she's the one who. Uh, uh, you know, when we look at a note and I say, boy, this looks like a good note. We, you know, we should really look at it. She says, uh, what about this? What about that? What about, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. So, uh, we're, in fact, we're working on one today just like that. Uh, it's got all sorts of little little uh, peccadillos about it that uh, we're, we're trying to work out. But uh, anyway, that's... You're, you're yang then, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure. That's good stuff there. And now, you... Um... You started paper the paper source online back in 1987. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Yes, uh, it, it wasn't online at the time. Obviously, mm-hmm. uh, it was. Uh, we, you know, stuffed envelopes and sent out U.S. mail, and it's uh, still it's still our, our papers. Our journal is is published every month, and it's uh, runs you know eight ten pages a month of articles, and uh, it is still a print uh, newsletter. And we do uh, uh, we do send out some. Uh, electronics if people want it but most of our subscribers still want to hold something in their hands and so mm. that's what we do yeah i i love the online edition i love the emails that you send out on a regular basis of, of newsworthy notes and things that are going on and 
um, things that we should you know look at and keep in mind. I don't think a lot, I think a lot of people take that for granted. I know that I like reading something in my hand anyway, but it's always nice to get those updates and, and see what's going on in the industry. And then you started uh, the the uh, the paper source convention when exactly? The first convention we had was uh, ninety two uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Crystal City, which is uh, Arlington, Virginia, across uh, Washington D.C. area. Uh, we did those until 99. The business started changing dramatically. Uh, the Marriott Hotel wanted us to sign a, a $40,000 guarantee for the next year. And we saw how the things were changing in the business. Uh, uh, companies were going out of business that uh, bought notes, uh, sold notes. Uh, things were just changing. So we stopped that, started doing cruises uh, in the early 2000s. And about this will be our sixth year now for doing our latest incarnation, which is called the Notes Symposium. Mm -hmm. uh, and, for, and for those that don't know, guys, it's a great event. It takes place. You, your, your next one is uh, April 28th and 29th in Las Vegas. Is that correct? Uh, close. 26, 27, and 28. Thursday okay. through Saturday. That's and, right. Uh, we'd be... Uh, uh, it's a... I don't want to, you know, look like I'm trying to sell something just uh we're at uh, paperstoreseminars.com somebody wants to take a look at it uh come to it we had uh a little over 450 people last year and it's a great networking opportunity if nothing else but we have some great what i try to do is get people to teach uh who are actually in the business and they you know come out of their offices and they teach for us and then they go back to their office and keep doing notes uh you know they're they're not on the seminar circuit 100 percent of the time for sure and uh, We'd like to get real people there. But anyway, that's paperstoreseminars.com. If people are interested in that, that'd be wonderful. Sure. We'll make sure to post a link in Facebook and other things as well on the blog for those that can get, get, take advantage. Because it is a great, uh, we've gone a couple times. Uh, I was planning on going to it, but it looks like we're headed on a surprise vacation uh, around that time. But it is a great event, guys. Lots of great networking, great people. We have great vendors. And uh, it's, it's, it, I'd say it's probably the best networking event in the note industry out there for everybody so but well, hey no problem sorry you won't be there i, be I, I know i would be love to be there but we're gonna be going to hawaii i think so uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh but anyway we i had it circled on the calendar in my office but anyway you are still actively invested in notes kind of what's your bread and butter what's your favorite thing that you like doing is it owner finance notes is it institutional notes is it first seconds Okay. Uh, well, let me tell you what we're not into, or I'm not into personally, uh, is, uh, and I, I know this, uh, everybody does things differently. You do things differently. Uh, I've never really gotten heavily into non-performing. Um, it's, I've had non-performing notes, but not, you know, not on purpose. Uh, the, uh, uh, we do uh, mostly performing notes. We've done some car paper investments. Uh, which actually worked out very well. That's a numbers game. You can't just mm -hmm. buy one or two. You got to buy a bunch because you know the you, when you buy collateral it has wheels, uh, that can be a problem. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but it's mostly performing notes. Uh, I like first. We bought seconds. Uh, done okay on on seconds. Um, of course, you can get them a lot cheaper, and you can foreclose. A lot of people don't think, don't believe you can foreclose from a second position, but yes, you can. Uh, so that's, that's, uh, I'm not really put off by a second. I've never gone into anything more junior than that. Uh, but we're just today, we're uh, making an offer on a, uh, a performing note. Uh, it's a first and uh, we'll, we hope to get it. I think we uh, pretty much have a, a, a line on it to get it at a, a double digit yield and, uh, you know, low, low double digit yield, but still that's, uh, you can still do those things. I mean, they're out there and uh, you can, you can, uh, you can snag, uh, the nice thing about a performing note is <clears throat> you can get a lot more information, as you know, Scott, than you usually can with a non-performing note. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so that's, you know, there, it's, it's out there. And uh, that's my, uh, that's more or less our bread and butter. And I say we do invest in uh, rental housing. We still do that uh, and do it on uh, various ways that minimize our management uh, and uh, create a, create a profit as you're going in. They always say, you know, Know, uh, know what your exit strategy is uh, as soon as you go in, when you're going in, whether it's a note or real estate. And so we always try to figure out, you know, what is our exit strategy in case this doesn't work out or in case it does. And we just, you know, X number of years from now, we want to liquidate uh, some of our portfolio. Uh, so that's, that's where we're at. 
Cool. Now, are you buying your rental homes kind of in your around your neck of the woods? Absolutely. You're... Okay. Absolutely. I don't have any uh, any rental houses uh, more than about fifteen minutes from from my house, uh, and because uh, I you know I don't want to be driving an hour to uh, deal with uh, to you know to meet some somebody who wants to rent a house who never shows up you know mm-hmm. this kind of thing. So we we've sort of minimized minimized all that. We do our own management. Uh, we've got this portfolio of rental houses. I do have to put in a, a plug to a couple of people who have been uh, my mentors and been extremely uh, wonderful to me in the single family uh, rental house area. And that's uh, John Schaub. Uh, and his uh, website is johnshaub.com. That's S-C-H-A-U-B. Uh, another good friend is Pete Fortunato. And his website is uh, Peter Fortunato, F-O-R-T-U-N-A-T-O.com. Uh, both brilliant guys in the single family and note investment area as well. John and Pete both teach note investing uh, for personal uh, personal investment. Mm-hmm. I think Peter just had a, a workshop first part of December, actually. Uh, it was one of his most recent ones. Actually, we had a couple of our students headed out there. Uh, we did. We did. Him. We had, uh, Alice and I had dinner with, uh, with Pete uh, Christmas Eve, as a matter of fact, and he had just finish that up but you're right he's uh, he and John Schaub are doing another one I don't think they've announced it yet but it's going to be in May uh, in the Tampa area so nice. it'll be up on their website I'm sure good stuff now <clears throat> you like performing notes we get people all the time and ask us hey where are they f- where do I find notes where do I find notes at and we, and we you know talk about going to institutions but there's so much paper out there on the owner finance side is that kind of where your your bread and butter of finding performing notes is, is from the owner finance side or institution side what do you prefer I uh, prefer owner finance. Uh, we, we look for owner finance paper and uh, it's uh, uh, we, we've tried dealing with institutions. Um, not easy to do when you're uh, looking for performing paper. They don't understand what you're talking about. They have a different language. Uh, you can't just walk into a bank and buy a one note. Uh, they want to sell you a multi-million dollar portfolio if they want to do that at all. And that's not a, you know, we're, we're dealing with our personal funds. So we're not, uh, not doing that. So we look for, for owner finance notes. Um, Scott, I'm going to have to go over and make sure that uh, I'm not going to lose my internet connection. I got oh, Okay. <laughs> so that is a good time, guys. If you have some questions for Bill to go ahead and type those into Facebook uh, there below, we'll make sure to go through those things, those questions for you. <laughs> Don't want to lose internet connection. That's definitely important there for us this morning here. But um if you have not checked out the paper store symposium, definitely check it out. Great event to go to. Uh, and in fact, this Thursday through Saturday is a great thing. Sunday always has a hike at the Red Rock Canyon there in, in Las Vegas as well for everybody. But we have met some great people there. Carl White, Simon, uh, Simon White definitely is a, a great guy out there. Uh, taught us a lot about marketing. Met him at the event. And he still does a lot of stuff, I think, for Bill as well, too. But um you also, uh, let's talk a little bit about car paper, because I get some questions about car paper. And that's, I really think, based on everything I see too, Bill, that's really kind of the next bubble burst is the used car paper. Are you seeing that as well out there? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's I'm, I'm, clarify your question for me a little bit, Scott. Sure. Uh, with uh, You said you invest in auto loans or auto paper debt right. as well. Yeah. well and, we have in the past. Okay. Are you doing any of that recently or, or, or keeping up with that? No, we haven't done it recently. Uh, it's not because we're opposed to it. It's just we've been, you know, uh, other other things going on. Um, so I'm I'm not, I, w- I certainly don't pull myself out as an expert on car paper. Uh, the, as I said, the only thing I can say is it's a numbers game. Uh, don't think you're going to go in and just uh, go to a car lot and buy a few notes. Uh, you, you know, you need to buy a bunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they, they have great yields, but again, you know, just to, not to be repetitive, but they have wheels too. And uh, so that's, uh, people can uh, d- default and uh, it depends on, you know, if I were looking for car paper today, I'd look more high end, uh, better customers, um, less likely to uh, default on, on their notes. Uh, and uh, it's tough to, you know, it's unlike a house where you buy non-performing paper and you, you know, if you, you can rework the, the terms with the, uh, uh, with the borrower or uh, if you have to uh, take the house back, uh, you're not going to do that with a car, uh, with, a, with an owner of a car. So uh, it's uh, it's risky. Yeah, I've got a buddy here in, in town who owns a used car lot, and he offers financing up. You know, since he's the bank, he can sell the, the house or the car that's got a blue book value of 10 for 18, you know, and then he has a switch on it that if they don't pay every two weeks, it turns the car off uh, no matter where it is. So. <laughs> that's cool. I like that. I like that. Yeah. But he... 
he he was telling me he could sell his paper. His last uh, firm's coming. I'm looking to buy it immediately, like a 85 cents on the dollar for the most part. And it's you know it's uh, paper. It's rates between 12 and 18 percent interest rate. So it turns out to be a pretty good deal. But he says it's a lot of maintenance. It's a lot of tracking people down, and and you know you don't get the best quality of borrower. And there's nothing wrong with them because everybody needs a car, but. Right. Um, it makes for an interesting time sometimes. <laughs> well, that's why I said, uh, you know, if I were going back into it, uh, which I might at some point, um, you know, I'd look for a, a paper on higher end vehicles uh, and uh, paper, for example, on uh, um, OTR uh, drivers, over the road uh, drivers who own their own rigs. I mm -hmm. mean, they're, you know, they don't want to default on, they don't want to lose their rig. Uh, so that's uh, that's another possibility. But, uh, you know, we're looking, I don't know what yields are today because I haven't looked at it in a while. I mean, I'm, we were pulling in about 35% yield um, mm -hmm. on, on the paper at the time. Yeah. Uh, where do you see the market at? With you running your event and, and keeping track of everything, where do you see the market going? I and mean, obviously there's been a pricing increase across the board as we get a lot of, R I just like to call them REO refugees coming into the game, trying to to buy properties or, or landlords that don't want to be a landlord and want to be a lean lord, uh, kind of increasing pricing. Where do you kind of see the, the, the distress market going? And we'll talk about the owner finance market after that. Okay. Uh, the distress market is certainly the uh, um, investment du jour, if you, want to, you know, investment of the day. Uh, it's extremely popular. Uh, I'd say we get uh, more inquiries about uh, non performing uh, paper. Uh, certainly more than ever, and possibly more than uh, we get of any any other kind of paper. Uh, and I often refer him to Scott Carson uh, as the, the nation's expert on that. Uh, the uh, uh, I think it's uh, it's still growing, as you know uh, very well. The pools, uh, the the universe of of paper of, of non-performing paper has shrunk. Uh, you know, foreclosures are are at low levels in many since they've are many years. Uh, so we are, the, the market is tightening. Uh, for a lot of people, uh, the, uh, you know, the time of the uh, small investor going in and making a huge yield, uh, that train has left the station, uh, in my opinion. Uh, we, we might have a discussion about that if you want. I'd be interested in your perspective on that. But uh, from what I see, uh, a lot of small investors, uh, you know, one, one of the most common questions is, well, who can I hire to do the uh, uh, to to rework these notes uh, and to renegotiate them and to get them performing again and service them? And uh, the experts that I know, you're uh, and you may agree on this. Uh, you really got to do it yourself. I mean, you're you're you've got. There's no company out there that's just a full service company. It's gonna you buy the note and they'll take it over and make it reperforming. You just sit back and collect the money. Uh, so I warn people about that, and I will also warn people that. Uh, I personally think it's best to go out and find the non-performing paper uh, rather than going to a quote fund uh, and buying their paper. Uh, there are great funds out there. Uh, there are, people have done very well with funds, but there are also some horror stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I, if you, if you're considering looking at some uh, company that, uh, that says that they have notes for sale or, you know, these very attractive yields, non-performing notes, really check them out. Uh, what I do is, you know, with any company or with anybody I'm not sure of, I just go on the internet and I type in the name of the company or the name of the person, and, and I do various searches. I'll put fraud, scam, you know, ripoff, and see what comes up. And now you're always going to get just like Yelp or anything else. You know, some people will say this is the greatest thing in the world. Some people say it's the worst thing in the world. So you, you have to use some some common sense. But if you see a lot of negatives, uh, you know, back off and, and look for somebody else. It's uh, my advice. I, I couldn't agree more with that. I, I think the funds, you know, while they have kind of ruled the last couple of years because they were the easiest low hanging fruit, you know, they, they're they also in the, in the prospect of making money as well. And I think the pricing when you're buying from a fund just doesn't make sense most of the time. Um, and I, I agree, you, you've got to go out and find the paper yourself. You've got to spend the time doing the due diligence, whether it is calling the regional banks or, or reaching out online and, and mailing out to servicers or whatever it is to find that, that paper. You have to do it, but you 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 hit the nail on the head. I think the the day of the the fifteen, the twenty five, the fifty thousand dollar investor, where they're just buying one or two notes, I don't think that's the, the the place for them to be in the note industry right now. I think they've got to be raising capital to buy bigger chunks, because with bigger pools, you're getting better pricing and a lot more options. It's my opinion. 
I'm sure. we're seeing that there. I didn't know if you would, Scott. I had no idea. So yeah. <laughs> Well, we see it all the time. Like somebody you know, calls us up, hey, I got 10, 15 grand. I want to buy a note. And I'm like, well, you could probably buy one. Doesn't mean you're going to want to, you're going to make any money on it. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, you've got to be careful. A lot of people in today's world, I think with the use of the internet and technology, we have lost our patience. <laughs> and you said something very good at the beginning. You said that Allison looks at your deals. When you're all excited, she looks at the deals to bring you down. And I don't think a lot of people have that they like oh it looks good it looks good they're not looking they're always looking at the best case scenario versus looking at the what ifs you know what i mean oh yeah absolutely yeah you got it you got to have an exit strategy you got to say okay what can go wrong what are all the things could possibly go wrong and how am i going to deal with those if they happen Mm -hmm. and uh you know if you can answer those questions and you're happy with the outcome of each of those things happening and uh you're happy with the way you you'd handle them then then maybe you want to go for it but uh you know you I think, too, uh, just I did want to mention a couple of things, Scott, sort of related to that. Uh, We're going to see, I believe we're going to see interest rates uh, go up. Uh, They've been at historic lows. In fact, when I say historic, I mean historic. Uh, There are studies that I've seen that actually they know what the interest rates were back in in ancient times, Babylonia, uh, biblical times, uh, 5,000. Thousand years. I have a chart uh, we published in the paper source journal showing interest rates going back 5,000 years. They have never been lower in 5,000 years than they have been here in the last few years and around the world. Um, you know, there's some places, uh, I don't remember all the countries, but there are half a dozen countries, mostly in Europe. I think Japan is one of them uh, where they have negative interest rates, uh, where you put, you pay the bank to hold on to your money. Uh, you, you, you deposit a thousand dollars and you'll get back $925 or something in a, in a year. So it's crazy. Uh, but those, those days are over. Uh, you look at the 10 year U S treasury yield. Uh, it's just about ready to break. It's 2007 high. It hasn't been this high since, uh, since then, uh, I believe rates are going to rise around the world. Um, and what is, what does that mean? Well, that means, uh, that mortgage interest rates are going to go up. And what does that mean? That means more defaults means fewer people will be able to qualify to buy a house. It means more owner financing. Uh, so from the note perspective, that's a good thing from the note investor perspective. Uh, we are going to see more default to paper. We are going to see more uh, owner financing. I mean, when you when you can't, you know, when, a, when somebody wants to sell their house uh, and people can't qualify to sell a house, what do you do? Well, as a home seller, you can offer to what they call owner financing or hold, hold the paper, either as a first or second. Uh, so we're going to, we've seen that before and we're going to see it again. The other thing is the uh, uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB. Uh, it's been a thorn in our side along with Dodd-Frank and the SAFE Act. Uh, a lot of things in it that uh, have caused a lot of problems. The CFPB uh, has taken it upon themselves to determine whether you can, uh, w- whether your yield when you buy a note is fair. Okay. So they can actually come in and say, well, you bought that note at a 12% yield. We don't think that's fair. Uh, so you need to, to dr- uh, drop your yield. Or uh, So th- they're doing all sorts of things. They're, they're putting people out of business uh, through their, their regulations. Uh, that looks like it's over. Uh, Mick Mulvaney is the new director of the CFPB. Uh, he just announced, if you ever heard of a government bureaucrat doing this, the, the CFP, he doesn't want any more money for his bureau. He says, we have plenty of money. We don't need any more. That's unheard of. Uh, and just today, in fact, uh, he put out a, a press release saying that uh, the CFPB is pulling back in their regulations. They're not going to write any new regulations. They're just going to enforce what the law tells them they have to enforce and leave it at that. So that's really, really good. Uh, another thing on the, on the Washington scene is the uh, uh, Trump Republican tax bill. Uh, it's going to be tremendous for note investors. Uh, if you have a what's called a pass-through entity, which is a, uh, an S corporation, a limited liability company, LLC, a sole proprietorship or a partnership, you'll be able to deduct 20% of your note income off your taxes. Not, your, not just your expenses, but your income, 20% uh, starting next year. So that's, that's tremendous. Um, Senate Bill 2155, which is in the United States Senate right now, uh, Senator uh, Crapo from uh, Idaho, uh, rolls back Dodd Frank to a great degree. It's in the Senate Banking Committee. Uh, they held hearings um, January 30th, uh, and it has 23 Senate co-sponsors. 
which is almost half the Senate, and it's equally divided among Republicans and Democrats. Uh, so it's uh, a lot of good things are happening uh, for note investors, for real estate investors, and for for general business. Uh, the economy is uh, is doing great, and uh, they're doing greater and uh, greater things are on are on the horizon. <laughs> I would totally agree. Those are some great points that we have to look forward to here over the next 12, 24, and, and however long it takes for some of that stuff to roll into it and hit our bottom lines of things. But we, uh, the, the, with the market changing like it is, and I agree, interest rates have no place to go but go up. I think we saw a little bit of a, a, a correction last week with the market kind of changing. And, and I, 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 have, I crack up daily on the uh, the Bitcoin posts of all the Bitcoin experts out there talking about what's going on. I still believe you got the best investment is something solid as an asset in real estate. Some, everybody's always going to need a house to live in, right? Yeah. Um, what is your opinion on a lot of the, the kind of the new contract for deeds that are hitting the market? We, we see a lot of that on the low level pricing, especially coming from like the Harbor portfolios, the large funds that bought large pools of REOs and then turned around and, and offered owner kind of owner financing with a contract for deeds. Are you, are you, uh, positive on those or mixed reviews or body of that stuff? What's kind of your opinion on those? I'm, uh, I'm an advi- on an advisory capacity to uh, a, a commission, which is, uh, um, has been drawing up uh, suggested regulations uh, on contracts for deed. There is, uh, there's a lot of uh, pushback on contracts for deed. And to, to those of your viewers and listeners uh, who may not know what we're talking about here, a contract for deed uh, means that the buyer of the house never gets the title until the mortgage is paid off or the contract is paid off. So the seller of the house holds on to title and they basically just are paying, paying the seller of the house. Uh, and at the end of 20 years or 10 years or 30 years, whatever the contract might run, uh, they, don't, they don't have title to that house. Uh, and so you've got to trust the uh, seller of that house uh, not to go, for example, sell it again because uh, he's holding the title. He or she is holding the title. Uh, so that's, it's, there's a lot of pushback about that. Uh, there's a lot of fraud. Uh, obviously, it lends itself to fraud. Um, so I would be concerned about the regulatory environment. I think that uh, they're going to be more of a crackdown than there has been on, on who can do contracts for deed and how they're to be written. Uh, so that's an area that I'd, I'd be afraid to, 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 to be, you know, buying these contracts from these companies, if that's what you're asking, buying the contracts from these companies that have bought up, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of rental houses and selling them on contracts for deed. I, that scares me, to be honest with you. Well, uh, you, you mentioned it, it, it increases the opportunity for all. Where have you seen some examples that you want to share, or, or on, on the fraud of the contract for deeds that you're talking about? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't have, I don't have any personal examples. Okay. Um, you know, I just I can you know cite news stories that I've read in the last year or so okay. uh, where, where people have come in and ripped people off with contracts for deed. These are mostly on low end houses, mm-hmm. uh, but it's so easy. You know, if you know if you buy a you know, low end house and uh, you sell it to some poor people who don't have representation uh, and you hold the title. Well, what's going to stop you from doing that again and again and again on the same house. And uh, then, you know, they try to find you and you're on, you know, you're in Europe somewhere. So uh, it's uh, no, it's, it's not, it's, if I were going to buy a contract uh, I'd have it uh, converted to a, to a mortgage or a trustee, depending on what, you know, what state it's in. And most most investors, not all, but most note investors that I'm familiar with, and I know a lot of them, uh, who are, you know, full time businesses as as national note investors or regional note investors, want contracts for deed converted to uh, uh, mortgages or trustees. Yeah, we we've bought some of those contract for deeds, and that's we're in the process of converting a, a chunk of them. Definitely, with the borrowers have been in, been paying on a, a while, they've got some equity. Definitely converting them to mortgages. It makes it a little bit easier. It makes it more of attractive paper. Um, and yeah. it, it incentivizes the, you know, the borrowers even more equity in the deal because they are on, you know, they are on title at that point, which is a good exactly thing. Exactly right. Exactly right. So, uh, you know, it's be more, you know, if, if you would come to me with a contract for a deed, I'd, you know, want it to be converted to. And, uh, you know, I, as an investor, if you were selling these to investors, I'd be more interested, obviously, than in a mortgage or a trustee than a contract for deed. Mm-hmm. But good question. That's an interesting question. Cool. Now, <clears throat> Where are you finding your owner finance deals? You don't don't give any names because people have been asking. <laughs> where do you find 
where are you finding your deals that you're buying? Is it, are you uh, going to the public records? Are you just networking? Are you using your list of contacts? What, what, where are you finding your deals these days? I actually uh, <clears throat> go downtown to in Kerrville, Texas, which is 22,000 people uh, with a signboard. And I walk around uh, the downtown area. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I might have to make an image of that with you on a signboard in your head. <laughs> no, uh, it is, uh, it's mostly personal networking. And uh, that's a, uh, you know, that's a base building thing. It takes a long time to, to build up a base. Uh, but, uh, you know, every so often, uh, you know, I'll have an accountant or a realtor call me and say, uh, you know, I know you buy notes and um, here's one that uh, I became aware of. Uh, our lawyer might call uh, with something like that. So you, you, when, when, you, when you're doing this, you think of, well, who is in a position to see notes on a regular basis? Uh, people, as I said, lawyers, estate lawyers, uh, lawyers who handle estates particularly see notes all the time. Uh, divorce lawyers see notes all the time. Um, uh, uh, CPAs, people who work at title companies uh, see notes all the time. Realtors, real estate brokers. Uh, so just kind of think, well, who, you know, in the, in their course of their daily uh, work, who has notes come across their desk? Those are the people that you want to get to know uh, and let them know you buy notes. Uh, and it's uh, it's been, you know, over the years, you'll see that your phone starts ringing and your you know, emails will be coming in and your texts will be coming in. Uh, the last, the one that I mentioned uh, that we're working on just today, uh, I was at a John Schaub seminar in Florida. Uh, in January, and the fellow sitting next to me uh, ha is a paper store subscriber, which I didn't know. And uh, he said, oh, "I have a note. I want. I'm interested in selling." And so we're we're ending up buying it. Uh, so uh, it's just personal contact is the, what works works best for me. If you're just starting out, uh, you might try some ads. Uh, you know, go on Craigslist. It's free. Why not give it a shot? Uh, thing about Craigslist is you have to keep putting it up, and putting it up because you get knocked down on the list. Uh, so, but it's uh, you know it's, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, so start out with things like that and uh, and personal networking. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I love that you about the attorneys is I used to always um, early on is I'd get the foreclosure list taking place here in Travis County or Bear County in San Antonio, and I would scan down to find like a one-off foreclosure taking place, and it was often a, a different attorney that was handling the sale versus everybody else with the bigger banks. And those were the attorneys that I love calling because mm -hmm. they were putting deals together. They were often the local, you know, local attorney knew how to do the owner finance that realtors are you know, sending them deals and great source, great recommendation on that there, Bill. Good. Good stuff. Great. Cool. Um, <clears throat> if you were a brand new note investor, brand new to the game, coming from fix and flips, had some real estate experience, where would you start? What would you do if you had to start all over again? You mean what type of note? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you if you had to start all over again with the knowledge that you have, where would you begin in today's market? We should we should give you questions in advance. <laughs> I love it because we should give you questions in advance. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't didn't think I was going to ask that until about five seconds ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, where would I start? Um, I would start by learning more than I did when I first started out. I jumped in too quickly and made some serious mistakes, uh, both in, in notes and real estate. Uh, so I would, I didn't have the opportunity um, that you have today with, you know, there was no Scott Carson out there, no WeCloseNotes.com. Um, today you can find a, a mentor uh, you can get much more education, uh, and I encourage people, I'm sure they, they already are, but if they're not, to uh, go to your, your website and to see what things you have to offer. Uh, and, and Scott, it's be a, a great uh, teacher for you. Uh, so that's, you know, that's what comes to mind, is if I knew more of what I, I didn't even know the questions I should be asking, much less the answers to them. Uh, so uh, uh, just be, be careful. I, um, you know, you don't want to, there's two mistakes you can make. You can jump in too quickly, or you can have what they call a paralysis of analysis. And I'm sure you know people like that. They're, you know, I remember being at a Jimmy Napier seminar back in the early 80s, uh, talking to a, a, a man about notes, and uh, I didn't know that much about it. And I said, well, 
he said, well, I, he said, I haven't bought any yet. He said, I, uh, I thought I should uh, uh, take as many seminars as possible, which makes sense. And he says, um, and then I got a uh, real estate uh, license uh, just to get more information, but I didn't think that was enough. So I got a real estate broker's license, but I haven't bought any notes. And he said, uh, I think I need an MBA to, before I buy any. So he's working on an MBA. That's a, you know, that is the great, greatest example of paralysis of analysis that, uh, you know, I just can't, can't get around that. Uh, so that, that would be, uh, that would be my, my answer. Um, let me let me go back to something you said. We're talking about finding notes, which is you know on top of everybody's list of questions. Um, Allison just handed me a, a comment that uh, one way uh, we found a note through networking is that uh, we were on a cruise ship, and uh, it was a dive boat, actually dive cruise, and uh, scuba diving. And uh, we met this uh, couple, and we became friends with them and socialized with them over the years. And then uh, kind of lost touch with them. They broke up and, uh, you know, kind of lost touch with, with them. And probably 10 years maybe after I'd, I'd seen the guy, Tom, uh, he called me up and he had a note. And he said, I remember that she bought notes. <laughs> I said, well, I've, you know, I barely remembered his name, but he, you know, he remembered that, he, that I bought notes and it was a wacko note. I mean, it was really bizarre. Uh, and, uh, so we had uh, we were able to, to to put him together with uh, do do some do some deals with him. So there there's an example of you never know you just never know who you meet. Uh, Ten years from now might have kept your card uh, and or find you in in their old email batches or whatever it is. And uh, so that's the power of networking. It just can go forever. I would totally agree to that. It's it's never know who you're going to talk to. Whoever's going to show up be a blast from the past. <laughs> oh yeah yeah I at. Uh, uh, I've seen people with who have, uh, you know, those magnetic board, um, signs on their cars that I buy notes, you know, mm -hmm. call me and that, you know, their phone number, mm -hmm. you know, who knows why not? Exactly. There's, it doesn't cost anything and getting the word out. I think a lot of people are scared. It is, especially they're working uh, at a job full time about making that transition to a full time note investor scared. Somebody's going to see it scared. Their boss is going to upset at them. And, and do you, you want to have any insights to people or any pointers you want to give to anybody out there that's looking at making a transition like that, maybe feeling that fear right now, Bill? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's scary. I mean, it, it is it's scary to think, you know, I'm, am I going to go in this full time? Uh, I always say, you know, let your note business tell you when it's time to quit your job. Uh, don't just quit your day job and say, well, I'm going to go in the note business full time. That's doing it backwards. Uh, get to the point where you're doing you're spending so much time on your note deals and making so much more money than you're making in your job, then that's, that's a real good indication that it's, it's time to make that move. Uh, but uh, until then it's a uh, do it part-time. Do you yeah. agree with us? I, I, t I totally agree. Okay. If you, uh, I had somebody call me yesterday, Hey, I got to close on a deal in 30 days. I'm like, well, then you probably need to get a job. If you can't, if you and I, that's nothing, it's just the truth of the thing. If you're brand new at, at any type, you don't have a real estate experience or things like that. I got to, I got to pay my mortgage in 30 days. Look, you need to go to a job because if you're stressed out financially, you're not going to make good decisions when it comes to investments. Most of the time you're going to overlook some stuff because you're going to try to squeeze a round peg into a somewhat square hole and it could end up biting you the, the butt and you'd be in a bad situation. I've always said the note business is not a get rich quick scheme. It is a get rich over years uh, aspect of things of adding deals, you know, cause it, it, you and I both know this, whether it's performing or non-performing, you never know which way it can go. We've had non-performing notes we bought that turn into re-performing notes relatively quickly. And then we've had others that were performing that we ended up having to take the foreclosure. It just, it is what it is. Now you have, I think I heard somebody tell me one time that you've only taken a handful of the notes that you have bought that turned into non-performing to foreclosure. What's your secret for getting things done without having to go all through the foreclosure process? Uh, actually, Scott, that is not, what you heard is not accurate. Um, I did say in an interview that we had had, and as far as I can remember, we had one foreclosure over the past 30 some years. Uh, my wife, Allison, reminded me that I was totally wrong. Uh, we've had no, no notes go to foreclosure. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of a rental situation where you had to take it out of court over over stealing the dish built in dishwasher <laughs> uh, among other things. Um, Is that a new course in dishes and defaults? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it, it's, I got to say, it's just personal working with people. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to throw somebody out of their house. Uh, you know, and I'm, I, you know, that's a, probably a fault of mine in, in that, that, uh, you know, we have let people slide on payments and, you know, tack them on the back end or just it's Christmas. They're having problems. Skip a payment. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, that way you, you work up a relationship with your payers, uh, whether they're renters or whether they're uh, note payers uh, and uh, try to work things out with them. Uh, try to, you know, try to, as I say, have a personal relationship with these people. We, uh, uh, we don't socialize with them, but we have a personal relationship uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, I, I got a great, uh, note from a, a tenant who moved out had been with us for a number of years. And I said, I, I want to compliment you. You've been a wonderful uh, renter from us. And if you ever need a place, uh, please, uh, consider us again. And she, uh, I said, it's really hard to find good tenants. And she wrote back and she said, well, you may not have never thought of it this way, but for a tenant, it's really hard to find a good landlord. And, you know, I thought, wow, yeah, I guess, I guess so. So if you, you have this relationship with people, you can sit down, you can work out the problem, find out what the problem is. The problem is often it's not a money problem. Uh, there's something else going on uh, that they can't, you know, they can't make the payment, but it's because of some other situation. So look at it, try to be a psychologist with them and sit down and uh, a counselor and a financial counselor. And uh, so far, you know, we've been blessed that uh, we have not had to uh, go to go to for the extreme of, of foreclosure with people. We've got you know, half a dozen ways to, to work it out uh, that doesn't involve foreclosure. Uh, and uh, one, you know, one real simple one is paying them to move, uh, just paying them to, to go away. And because uh, they, they can't afford to move. Well, it's going to be a lot cheaper than foreclosing or eviction uh, if we just dip in our pocket and, you know, in the long run, we'll be better off that way. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, offering the cash for keys is a, is a really effective. We, we just agreed to two cash for keys yesterday. And today with borrowers that like, listen, you're not gonna be able to make the payments. You're, you're behind. It's obviously you're missing, you're bouncing checks. Let's just go ahead and call it what it is. Let's, let's work out a, a situation here to get you out of a bad situation to something good. And, and I think it's unfortunate sometimes that we've got to play counselor to our borrowers sometimes too, huh, Bill? You, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, you know, sit down with them, um, try to find out what the situation is. Uh, you know, don't, don't think of yourself as, uh, you know, well, I'm, you know, I'm the creditor, you owe me money, so pay up or get out. Uh, sit down with them and, and see what, you know, how, how you might be able to, to help them out. Uh, maybe there's a, you know, maybe you can restructure the loan, loan with them. Um, you know, you can um, move them into another house. Uh, you know, there's, there's, I say, pay them to move, uh, pay them to, you know, to, to go away. Uh, the, you know, there's, if you think about it and think about your options with them, um, it's, at least it's worked out for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, is your, what is your? I always like to ask questions. What are you doing when you're not note investing? What's the thing that recharges Bill? Uh, well, I mentioned scuba diving. Uh-huh. I've done that in a while. Uh, I like business. So what? What? Uh, what I enjoy is uh, working uh, in another business. Uh, we have a vacation rental business. Uh, so we do do a lot of vacation rentals in the Cozumel. Uh, we have a condo in Cozumel and one in. Uh, uh, Corpus uh, near Corpus Christi uh, in Rockport, and oh. so we rent rent those out. So if you're interested, Scott, let's talk. <laughs> hey, I'm from Aransas Pass, Ingleside, so yeah. I'm very familiar with Corpus Christi and Rockport area. The uh, oh, yeah. te- the Texas yeah. Riviera, area, as I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, so you should be like seeing to- probably yeah. some defaulted notes down there uh, after the hurricanes, though, too, huh? Oh man, uh, the eye of Hurricane Harvey came right over our condos uh, in Rockport. Uh, or near Fulton Beach, and uh, that was, uh, but it, surprisingly little damage. We had a few leaks, and that was about it. But other places got just completely torn up. I think something like a third of the structures in the town are gone. Uh, so it's, uh, it was tough. Uh, but uh, so you know, anyway, we like uh, like the vacation rental business. Uh, we uh, mostly when we travel, it's on business, but we have the opportunity to uh, you know have some fun too. Uh, so so we we do like to travel. Um, I like to spend time with our, uh, uh, Springer Spaniel, uh, and, uh, he's the love of my life. So that recharges my batteries for sure. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, you have any recommendations for people? We got a question here. Uh, somebody asking, well, where do you find your news? What, what do you read on a daily basis? Are there any websites that you recommend people subscribe to? Uh, yeah, quite a few. Um, housingwire.com. Uh, uh, I look at realtor.com. 
Uh, I look at um, foxnews.com, foxbusiness.com, CNBC. Um, I like, uh, there's some, some other web, I look at Drudge every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they, a lot of, you know, a lot of times I'll pick up financial news. I, I blog almost every day uh, at papersourceonline.com. And uh, with and every week, uh, not well, I shouldn't say every week. I don't not every week, but I try to send out weekly if if the news warrants it, uh, news articles of interest to people in the note uh, and or real estate business. Uh, and uh, so that's if people are interested in that, they can go to papersourceonline.com, hit the contact us button, and just to let me know you're interested in being on that mailing list where you get weekly or you know every two three weeks whatever it is uh, news of the note business and uh, real estate business. Um, so those are some of the websites I go to. Um, I like, uh, oh golly. Uh, well, those, yeah, those are the major ones that come to mind. Newamerican.com is another one, uh, that I, I visit on a pretty regular basis for news. Um, I look at Scott's, uh, uh, Scott Carson's, uh, uh, website quite often to see what I can steal. Uh, <laughs> hey, it, it, it's not stealing if you you're more you're more welcome to borrow anything you need, Bill. <laughs> well, that's I think that's that's the beauty of it is that for the most part the note industry is a pretty pretty gentle uh, not gentle pretty giving group of people very networking. You know, Joel Markovitz coined the term a few years back about coopetition. We're all out working for our own business, but we're all willing to share resources or share you know, tips to keep people from making mistakes. I, I think you would agree to that, wouldn't you, Bill? Oh, it's, you know, that's the one thing I hear. If I hear one comment about the industry as a whole, that's the comment that I hear from people, particularly people new to the industry who say, you know, they come to our events and I'm sure they come to yours and say the same thing, uh, participate in yours, whether online or in, in person. I can't believe the willingness of, of people to share. I mean, people who have more experience are willing to, to pass it on to people who are just getting started uh, that is like a hallmark of the note business. And it's, I don't know if it's that way. And it's certainly not that way. And, you know, I spent most of my life in, uh, in politics. I still do uh, run campaigns every once in a while. And that's not, uh, that's not as common, believe me, but it, it certainly seems to be in the note business. People are always willing to help, always willing to talk to you. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's great from that standpoint, really, as people understand the importance of, give, of you know, passing it along. Definitely. I, I, I think that's a great place to to bring it in. So, Bill, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of busy schedule to join me here on the Note Closure Show. I know that people uh, online, people on the podcast definitely appreciate it as much as I do. Uh, if I can be of help of anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, once again, guys, he's got uh, the, him and Allison running an amazing event in Vegas. It's the April 26th, 27th, 28th uh, in Las Vegas. Where's it going to be at? The Tuscany again? It is the Tuscany Hotel and Casino and uh, just off about a couple blocks off the strip uh, in Las Vegas. So it's a really neat hotel. It's uh, just uh, looks like 27 acres, college campus uh, type environment. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a nice place to be. That's yes. right. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate your telling people about it. And uh, again, anything we can do for you guys and uh, you know, to, uh, to uh, you know, anything in the future, just let me know. Thanks, Bill. I appreciate it. All right, everybody. That will wrap it up for this episode of the Note Closer Show. Go out and make something happen. Like I said, go out and check Paper Source online and the Paper Source Symposium. You won't be disappointed. And uh, I love getting Bill's emails on what's going on in the industry. Um, it's, it's just a great, great source of information. And that's what it is all about. When you want to make a decision on, on something, the more educated you are about a subject or a property or an area or an industry, uh, the better off you'll be in the long run. So go out, make something happen. And uh, everybody, we'll see you all at the top, everybody.